This is the Warminster Town Football Club Supporter Podcast. This is the podcast by supporters for supporters. We bring you match reports, interviews and much more. We travel both home and away to bring you the excitement of non-league football to wherever you are. Welcome to the podcast. As always, it's good to have you here. Coming up in this episode, we look forward to reviewing the game against Portishead. And we have Andy Crabtree on the podcast who will give his thoughts on the game as well. We're also very pleased to welcome player coach Martin Johnson. So listen out for Martin and what he's got to say about his playing career and Warminster Town Football Club. But first of all, we go over to the one and only Mr. Jamie House. Hi, Jamie. Good to have you on the podcast once again. How are you doing? Good evening. I'm very well, thank you. Back in our uh, respective homes this evening, not doing it face to face. (laughs) Yes, without the echo now, of course. So that's okay. Yes, fortunately, there's no echo in either of our rooms. (laughs) (laughs) So, Jamie, a very, very... It's raining again on Saturday day, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's against that time of year again where we're, uh, we're, we're, get, we're getting the wet games come in now. Um, I was quite surprised, actually, with all the rain we've had this week, that uh, I think all the games actually went ahead in the Western League. So, uh, so yeah, that was um, quite the surprise. But, yeah, we, uh, we travel down to Porter's Head where uh, we normally get uh, one extreme of weather or the other. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what's your view on the game? It was... Uh... It was a close run thing in the end, in a way, but um, a little bit gutting. We came away with a draw. So just uh, just give us your resume, if you would, please. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, w- it was a close game in the end. I thought Port's head played really well. They they played very. Um, I think they played quite counter attacking football from what I watched. Um, they were they were very quick to break once they won the uh, the ball back. Um, and yeah, they they put up a good fight of it. Perhaps not surprisingly, Port's head have actually had a very good start to the season. Uh, this season they are basically equal on stats or they were equal on stats to us going into that game I think um they were, have played one more... they were three points above oh they were three points oh that's right because they yeah. played one more game yeah. didn't they they played a game did they play yeah. a game midweek I think possibly um because I think they were level on stats as of last week because they played the same amount of games as well I might be wrong about that but um but yeah um yeah they had a great start to the season they've had uh, four wins uh, one draw one defeat um so uh so yeah obviously the draw coming uh, against us this weekend and you know they they took the lead a uh, very good goal from them actually uh, across the uh, face of goal into the uh, the bottom corner nothing uh, really uh, callum could do about that one very well placed um then we managed to get one back through a quite a hefty deflection um after some uh, you know, question as to whether it might have been offside because the linesman did flag for it, but uh, fortunately the referee actually knew the rules for once. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so that was given. Uh, we then took the lead in the second half through a penalty. Jack Millet winning a penalty and uh, Jeffers, as usual, coolly putting away. And then we just let slip with literally about forty seconds to go. We uh, just gave away a free kick on the edge of the area, and uh, they managed to bundle it home after a bit of pinball in the area. So, uh, yeah, unfortunate. Probably should have won it, but. Um, you know, it's still a point. It's, you know. So. It is. In fact, we're now going to listen to Andy Crabtree's thoughts on that. So uh, I'm going to bring in Andy. I spoke to him a little bit earlier and these are his thoughts. And now it's time for Thoughts from the Dugout. So, Andy, a bit disappointing at the end. What's your view of the game? Obviously disappointed that we didn't take all three points. Um, our performance overall... Uh, I don't think we started particularly well. It was difficult conditions, but once we adjusted to it and got, you know, we we went a goal down. We adjusted to the wind in the rain mm. <laughs> and the slipping and it. sliding, <laughs> slipping and sliding, and then um, we got back on, you know, we got back on level terms deservedly just before half time after missing three or four good chances. Um, second half we came out sort of the better side. I thought for a lot long periods of the game we were a much better side deservedly went in front should have probably increased our lead um and a little bit of inexperience at the ends cost us dear i think mm. you know um we really should have been uh, 
not put ourselves in that position really um and it has cost us two points but overall i can't be too disappointed with the performance you know port said are doing quite well this year in the league you know they've they've won two games in a week and they've come up against mm-hmm. us and i think you know they used their get a jail card yeah. you know not dissimilar to when we played them last season at home we were one nil down with two minutes to go and we won two one so Yes, you know, yeah. perhaps we used our get a jail card better at that day. Yeah, you know, because we won. So that that happens in football. Unfortunately, yeah. we are young. We are quite inexperienced, and you know, we'll learn from it. And at the end of the day, we'll uh, come back stronger. Yeah, it's good, excellent. Uh, any any injury problems? Because I know we've got one or two out, and then Lewis got a bit of a clout on his ankle. It looked like so. How's things going there? Well, obviously, Lewis is going to probably be sidelined for three or four weeks. Is he? Um, he he's took a knock on his ankle. You know, I I don't know what the referee was looking at when that tackle went in, but that that was a red card all day long, as far as I'm concerned. Mm. The guys launched himself at Lewis you can see the still of the picture and he's a foot in the air with two feet flying in you know the balls mm-hmm. at Lewis's feet I think mean, that's disgraceful mm-hmm. but still that was one yeah, of the many strange good. decisions mm-hmm. the ref gave um yeah Jordan yeah. obviously had a bang on the head um <laughs> yeah. he, he might try and do that before the game next week because he seemed to play better after that yeah um <laughs> I thought he was doing a Terry. I thought he was doing a Terry that Butcher. That might, that might have been the cure. Actually, we'll have to bang him on the head before every game, and then perhaps he'll um, produce them performances every week. You no, know, oh. he, he should be all right. He's got some stitches in it now. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, we were struggling a little bit before. And Jacks Millick's had a knock for a couple of weeks. Joel Sissons has been struggling, and obviously we got Eben Mortimer Taylor out with. Um, a hamstring problem, although he's, he should be back in the squad for this weekend. And I think Jack and um, Joel will have some treatment. So we're not too bad. And obviously, Alex Churchard stood on the nail at work, so that didn't help. <laughs> not good. No, no. The walking wounded then, really, or the running wounded, as the case yeah, may be. Yeah, yeah. And when, we, we, when we finished a player with... We finished the game with the eleven fit players we had on the pitch, so mm. and that and that's sometimes how it is. So in the circumstances, I'd say a point wasn't too bad at all. Yeah, no, that's it's just the fact it's cruel right at the very end, isn't it? It's always a bit cruel, but yeah, from the other yeah. point of view, when you do it yourselves, it's great joy. So <laughs> it's yeah. Uh, it's yeah, cruel game sometimes, but uh, overall, it yeah. was an enjoyable game for anybody watching and. You know, good good footballing, I, really, I, despite I, the conditions. I, I thought we played some cracking football once we yeah. we stopped. You know, once we stopped trying to force the game and we're a little bit more patient, I thought we played quite good football. You know, we're trying to knock killer balls when we don't have to, just just recycle it and start again. And we and we kept trying to knock aimless balls forward, which really are not good to, any good to anybody. And and I thought mm. once you know once we got our heads around that. You know, we obviously at half time we tried to address that and 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 address it we did. So, you know. Yeah. Oh, I thought second half so, we played some excellent yeah. football. Yeah, it was it was good. Um, and any thoughts on the next match? We've got Almondsbury coming along to Weymouth Street. Any thoughts about them? Almondsbury are a very unpredictable side and you know that's that'll be a difficult game. I, I know they lost it well in the week. And I did see the goals, and it seemed like every goal was from a corner kick. But they are a very, they're usually a useful side. And I thought they had some new signings this year. And, and the person I spoke to said they were decent. So we won't be underestimating them. But it would be great if we could get a win and get back on track. It would, wouldn't it? Yeah, lovely. Well, Andy, thanks very much for your time. We appreciate that very much indeed. And uh, we look forward to the game on Saturday. Pleasure as always, Roland. Thank you very much. Coming up next is our guest of the week. Well, I'm very pleased that we have uh, Martin Johnson with us tonight. Uh, He's going to talk to us about his role at Warmest Town Football Club and a little bit about his background. So welcome to the podcast, Martin. Thank you very much, Roland. 
very, well, happy to, very happy to be here. Oh, we're delighted you've been able to come on. So that's great. So perhaps first of all, you'd like to just tell us a little bit about your footballing background, how you started, who you've played for, things like that. Yeah, no problem. Um, so as a young kid, I, I've always played kind of for Trobridge teams um, in and around in around the town sort of thing. So I played for Trobridge Wanderers as a child with Trobridge Town as well. Um, and then progressed through to under-16s and under-18s with Bradford Town. Um, whilst I was there, I was actually in kind of an academy sort of team called Team Bath, where we, we did actually quite well and won the under-18s eight, under Conference South. Um, so played a lot of the feeder clubs to, to the professional clubs, um, which was a really good, really, really good kind of opportunity and, um, and kind of age group to be kind of playing at because it was a good, intense football, um, which I really enjoyed. But then after that, we were obviously into men's football. So I was at Bradford Town with Paul Shanley for, for a long time, um, which I really enjoyed again, which um, also kind of, it's kind of where I learned how to play in, in ways, um, especially kind of the, the tool station kind of way of playing, especially as, as kind of a back to, back to goal striker sort of thing as well. Um, where you get kind of beaten up a little bit and take a little bit and give it off and try to feed players in. So, um, so yeah, that was kind of where I think really I learned how, learned how to play Western League, um, which was really enjoyable as well. Um, and since then, really, I've kind of floated around with a lot of teams. Um, I, for Wel Welton Rovers, uh, Radstock. Um, uh, I also played at, down in Southampton for Team Solent as well, which was a really good point. Which we um, we also won the com com was it the com Wessex? Um, oh, it was one of the Wessex League, um, which we got to also play at St Mary's as well, which was really really good experience. Um, and yeah, so and obviously now the last like, three years I've been in around. Warminster, which has been hit and miss sometimes, but like I say, this season's bit we've got off to a really good start, um, and, and kind of everyone's enjoying it really. Mm. Um, so to be honest, uh, it's we're in a really happy position, really, really happy position. So, and uh, with everything that's going on at the club and with the team, I think everybody's in the same kind of well, kind of got the same mindset as what I have as well, um, and everyone's happy. So Brilliant. yeah. So now you've got a new role as well, because you're now designated as player slash coach. So perhaps you'd like to tell, tell us a little bit about that, what your role is and what you do. Yeah, so it's, I say, it's, it's, it's a very different role for me. Um, I say it's, it's, it is nice turning up to training and not having to worry about kind of what we're going to be doing, how to set things up, especially, especially as kind of all, all from my younger and adult career, I've just had to turn up and, and be told what to do. But as now a kind of a personal trainer um, sort of side of myself, I've kind of worked into that role of being able to, being confident to tell people kind of what to do and give them their roles and bits. So yeah, I've kind of turned up with a different mindset now as, as to for everyone else rather than just myself, mm -hmm. um, which I have had to adapt to because I say a lot, a lot of football is, kind of you're looking after yourself a lot of the time you're making sure that you're doing the right things you're making sure you're you're getting your running done um but this season it's been the opposite way I've been making sure that other people have been doing their jobs right getting their running done getting their fitness getting kind of everything their pre-match um routines warm-ups everything so like you say the transition's been been a big one but the experience is really is it's, it's a good one. It's been really, really good. And, and also getting the three wins as well at the start of the season has been fantastic considering the pre-season we've had wasn't great. So um, it was a bit of a squeaky, squeaky bottom time. But what can you do? We, we, I've been in the Western League for a long time now and, and you know that t every team can beat most teams. So it's, it's more of a just take every game as it comes and um, just pop your tin hats on and get going. Yeah, it's that hard work and consistency, isn't it, as well, that's so important, really? It is, yeah, it is. It's, it's good habits. It's, it's good habits, and it's, it is exactly what you just said, hard work, consistency. Um, and most teams beat each other through hard work um, and getting stuck in. It's, unfortunately, sometimes the, the more tactical teams fail because they are just outbeaten 
they're out strength, they're out beaten, they're out witted, and and yeah, it's just one of those leagues, unfortunately. <laughs> well, in ways, it's great for yeah. for um, obviously spectators, but in in other ways, it's very unpredictable as to who's going to win most most weeks. So, yeah, it's enjoyable, but it's also like I say, it's a long season, very very long season. Yeah. So it's exciting to see what will happen. And we certainly hope we get a long season this year, don't we? Not not not, not ended rather soon than, as the uh, the last season was with COVID. So. Long yes, yeah, I, I do agree there. Yeah. So thinking about um, the squad now and everything, how's it shaped up with the players you've now got? There's been a few changes, comings and goings, etc. How do, how do you see the squad strength-wise for the coming season? Um, so at the start, at the start, we, we were kind of not worried as such because we do have a really good bunch. We've got, we've got a good core. Um, but a lot of it is having the depth throughout the whole of the season and, and obviously trying to build that from the start would be great. We know that as we go on, we're going to bring people in, people are going to leave. Um, that's just football. Um, that's, that's our league and that's the way it is. Um, but for now, the team that we've got is shaping up really, really well. Um, I think we, we're in a very strong position where we've got strength and depth. We've got a couple. Of, we've got two or three players in all sorts of positions, which can fill in as well. Um, so in in that front, we're we're kind of we're really happy. We're laughing a little bit because some other teams might not be in the same position. So um, confidence wise, is through the roof. I say the last couple of games that we've had, I know it hasn't looked great and it hasn't been great, but I think that there's we've we've got a lot more to to give, um, especially in the league as well. Um, so with with the Tavistock game, it was a bit of a it was a bit of a, a it didn't matter sort of game, but obviously different factors affected it as well. Don't need to say anything about that. But um, we overall, I think we're we're looking really strong, um, and I'm I'm very confident and positive that we can do some damage this season as well. Oh, that's it. Good. Well, there's been great signs in you know, especially the first three matches. I mean, they were. Uh, very good, good results, and uh, I know we've just gone over the weekend. This this podcast will will go out after Portishead, so we've still got another match to come yet. Yep. But, uh, you know, we were up against a strong Bishop Sutton side at the weekend, uh, particularly their front three were <laughs> kind of I handful. Did. You know, it was, yeah. it was defend at all costs with those three. They they've got an exceptional front lineup at Bishop Sutton, so they're going to be strong, I think, if they carry on like that. You know. Yes, yeah, I did. I did actually hear. Obviously, speaking to people about what actually happened at the weekend, um, it was that was the word that their their front three were through very strong. Um, bit of a bit of a weaker back four, um, and we had, and we got our chances, um, but just couldn't put them away, which is which was a shame. But like you say, it's 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 a game of two halves, and also it's it's a game of who wants it the most um, at the end of the day. And sometimes it's also a bit of luck as well. I know we, we're giving away a penalty yeah. um, with, with Lewis, unfortunately. Um, but it's a very long season. So it's one of those where you just um, you just dust yourself off and you have to get going again. Yeah, shame about that because Lewis just come on. <laughs> I think very, very much so, yeah. It's like a welcome need, back. He needs to get rid of those pink boots. They're too obvious. <laughs> Couldn't agree, yeah. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> the referee could spot them too easily. <laughs> yeah, definitely. That's, <laughs> That's my little tease of the day for Lewis. But yeah. yeah definitely. Well, thanks, those... thanks ever so much, Martin, for joining us on the podcast. Appreciate that very much indeed. No uh, problem. We'll hope you'll come back on again at some point as well. It'll be great. Anytime. Yeah, anytime. Just let me know. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much indeed. Once again, my thanks go to Martin Johnson for taking part in our podcast. We appreciate that very much indeed. And we look forward to bringing you many more interviews over the coming weeks of the Warminster Town Football Club Supporter Podcast. But now it's time to take a look at the league tables. So it's back to Jamie House. So we're back with you, Jamie. So what we'd like to do now is just take a, a little look at the league table. I know it's a little bit all over the place with teams have played a lot more games than others and all that kind of thing but it is taking shape and we're seeing some strong sides so perhaps you'd just like to run through a few of those with us absolutely well as you say it, it is all over the place a bit at the moment i mean i've never seen quite a, a a table like it with so many teams having played so many you know different numbers of games it's, uh, it's quite the muddle but uh we'll uh, we'll blast through it quickly because as you say it is starting to take shape and there are some uh, front runners starting to emerge 
So uh, Ashton and Backwell are top of the league at the moment, having played seven games and won six of them, only lost one. So they're top with 18 points. Uh, again, they've had a they've had a good start to the season. A lot of teams have actually have had a good start to the season. Um, normally it can be a bit more fluctuating, um, but there's quite a few teams that are standing out this season. Uh, Carlton Town a second, having played five and won all of them. Um, Welton Rovers are third, uh, having played five, won four, drawn one. Uh, Lebec United are fourth, having played seven, won four, uh, drawn one, lost two. And uh, Porter's Head round out the top five after their win against us. Oh, sorry, after their draw, sorry, against us uh, at the weekend. Uh, they've uh, played six, won four, drawn one, and uh, and lost one as well. So they're on 13 points. And obviously, Warminster, just outside the top five, we're in sixth at the moment, having played five, won three, uh, drawn one, and lost one. And then uh, poor old uh, Bishops Lydiard, um, still having a, a right torrid uh, time in the, the league at the moment. They've uh, rock bottom, played seven, lost seven. Uh, it's not going too well for them at the moment. Uh, Longwell Green Sports, their 19th. Uh, second from bottom, having played five, lost five. Devizes Town uh, are 18th, having played three, uh, lost two and drawn one. They took quite a heavy uh, defeat at the weekend, I believe. They lost uh, 7-1 to uh, the Bristol Telephones at home. So um, that's quite a, quite a shocker. Um, and then Hengrove Athletic are also down there uh, in 17th, having played four, drawn two, uh, lost two. And Old and Abertonians round out the bottom five in 16th, having played six, won one and lost five. Mm. It's, it's, it's very interesting. There's so much variation in performance between teams. And of course, some haven't played many games either. So it's... it's well, exactly. There is, clubs, a, there is know, that, but, yes. But the, the sort of high level of win rate for some of the teams is, is phenomenal. I mean, well, obviously, we started out with three out of three, which was great. Um, but we got five out of five for Khan and, you know, <laughs> that sort of thing. I know some... There are some crazy stats. I mean, it's, it's not what you, like I say, it's not normally what you see from the league. You may have seen maybe two or three teams get a fairly good win ratio and the others kind of fluctuate up and down. They might win one, draw one, lose one, you know. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's quite amazing. It's, I get the feeling it's going to be a very close title race this season. It could be some exciting stuff and hopefully we will be a part of it. I mean, our form hasn't been too bad so far. So uh, if we can beat some of the uh, the other teams that are punching up there, um make a bit of a dent in their uh, in their run you know who knows that would be good excellent now we were hoping this week as well to to talk about ladies football so we haven't done that in the podcast because the uh, the weather took its toll on the ladies match that would have been on sunday so we'll talk about um the, the ladies match next time we have one but uh, what's their table yes. actually looking like just to give us an update on how things are for warmest to ladies well, I believe only two games actually went ahead this weekend. For, amazingly, two games did go ahead. Um, and that was uh, FC Calm uh, ladies uh, versus Marlborough. Marlborough ran out four, three winners. And uh, Chippenham, FC Chippenham also played uh, and beat Bath City Youth Women uh, 6-3. So that uh, puts Chippenham Youth top of the league uh, on games played. Um, if Warminster had won, uh, had played um, on Sunday and won, uh, that would have we'd have still been equal on games played and uh, a win to win ratio as well, um, and probably on goal difference we'd have probably still been top. But that as a as a Chippenham played have played one more game now that does drop Women's Town ladies down to second. Um, Ashton Keynes are still uh, bottom of the league having uh, played three lost three. But uh, overall the the table their table hasn't really changed much. That's the only real change. And again, it's much earlier days for them as well because their season kicked off just a little bit later as well, didn't it? Mm -hmm. So it's all good stuff. Um, so we'll look forward to hoping it, the ladies will have a game. We'll get their manager on the podcast. He's scheduled in for next week as well. He was scheduled in for this week, but without a game, uh, we decided to put it back a week. Mm -hmm. So we'll talk to him. Uh, we'll not talk about Almersbury because we've already done that with Andy. But obviously, we look forward to seeing you on Saturday, Jamie. Going to bring your camera along as usual now? Hopefully, yes. Excellent. We, we're enjoying your photographs and uh, I'm enjoying taking them. Yeah. So that's all good stuff. Thank you for doing that. I shall see you on Saturday. There we go. Well, there goes the final whistle and that brings this week's podcast to an end. We hope you enjoyed the Warmester Town Football Club supportive podcast. So before you go, if you haven't done so already, please do subscribe using your favourite platform. Thanks for listening.